guys, thank you so much for being here. Hello and welcome to Late Show, Scotland's only late night talk show. I'm Ewan Cameron and regular viewers will know how much we love a legend on the show. Legends of magic like Penn and Teller or comedy legends like Eddie Izzard. They've all sat in our late night Scottish talk show seat. But we're hitting the big time tonight. The Premier League in fact with a footballing legend who won five league titles three European Cups and four League Cups with Liverpool, three League titles and four League Cups with Rangers, and he represented Scotland in three World Cup finals. That's pretty impressive. He's one of the world's finest midfielders. Here to talk about his brand new book and more, please welcome the legend that is Graham Sinek! Yes! Yes! Before we go any further, uh -huh. slightly concerned about this seat. This is not going to be a case of, and here you are. You remember this lady when you were 15, 16? <laughs> here she is. Can we... It's funny you should say that, because here she is, all the way from Edinburgh, from back in your day yeah. at school. Are you, are you actually sat there? Yes, I am. Are we, um, is this going to be a one-way thing, or do I get to, <laughs> do I get, to um, get some back on no, you? Can, can you do me a favour? Can you just pinch me? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, before we go anywhere, because this is a late night show special right. with you, my friend, right? I used to idolise you as a boy, and the reason I support Liverpool is because of uh, yourself. And Alan Hansen, and mm -hmm. Kenny Dalglish, and Stevie Nicol, and all the Scottish guys are at Liverpool. So to have you sat there is quite weird for me. Did you ever meet a hero of yours and, and you kind of like froze on the spot? No, it's not happened to me. But they say you shouldn't meet your hero, so hopefully... After the next half an hour, you're not thinking, what a plonker he was. <laughs> I don't think I will. You, you've flown into Glasgow, right? Yep. You're, on, you're, you're here to promote your, um, your book, yep. which we'll talk about in great detail in just a second. But there's a lot going on at Rangers just now. And I just wonder whether there's a coincidence there with what's going no, on at Rangers have been knocked out of the cup and you flying into no. Glasgow and Pedro Cachinha's job's on the line. And Are you going to Ibrox by any chance? No. Or are we chat with anyone? No, no, no. no. And the manage management's finished for me. I'm... I'm an old boy now, and I decided a good 10 years ago it wasn't for me anymore. Let's go right back to the very start, yep. right? At the age of 15, you leave Edinburgh mm -hmm. to go to London. At the age of 15, a month after your 15th birthday. So, I mean, why? How? What, what went on there? Well, I played for Scottish schools against English schools at White Hart Lane. Um, and the great Dave Mackay, who had broke his leg for the second time, a Spurs player, he... Um, was watching the game. He saw that I'd gone to, I was at the same school as he went to, and he recommended me to, to the manager there, and that's why I ended up at Tottenham. But the thing was, though, you trained with Celtic midweek. Mm -hmm. There was also talk of you maybe going to Rangers. Yeah, I played, I played but, for so, Scottish so, schools. You have, you know, you more or less pick your club. I trained with Celtic twice a week for a good year, and at the end of that season, uh, which would, would have been me coming up to 15, they said, we'll be in touch in the summer. Um, well, you also had the option of Rangers as well, yeah. but you knocked back both to go to Spurs at the age of yeah. 15, which seemed quite crazy looking at it. Yeah, I, I suppose, you know, I've, been, I've always had a bit of wanderlust. I, 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 I worked out, I've lived in, see, there are 26 or 20, 27 houses throughout my life. I've lived in digs, rented and owned some properties. And I don't know if that, you know, the grass for me, I think I've calmed down now, but the grass was always greener on the other side of the hill. Yeah, I was never going to be... Sort of just one club or as a player or just one club as a manager. Um, and I think that has to come from leaving home at 12, if you like, and, and it not being a big deal. And at 15, it wasn't a big deal for me to go to London. It excited me. So what team did you support as a wee boy? Because Rangers. I, you were a Rangers man? Yeah. See, that disappoints me. And the reason that that, the reason, was, the reason that, that disappoints me is because I had it in my head and a firm belief that you're a hearts man because I'm a hearts mm. man myself. Maybe I, just, maybe I just made that up. Maybe it's because of the connection with Tyne Castle Boys Club yeah. that I assumed that you were a hearts man, but you oh. were never a hearts man. Yeah, I, would have, I was not a great watcher of football, simply because you played in the morning for your school and in the afternoon you played for your boys club. We could have been teammates. How old do you think I am? <laughs> no, but I heard how good you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right, I was. But uh, then <laughs> girls came along and some booze, yeah. and then I kind of lost my way. Yeah. I wish I had a pun for every time I've heard that story. <laughs> I was going to be a great player, but women came along. I was going to be a great player, but, you know, dodgy knee. 
<laughs> so Rangers were your team when you were a young boy? Yeah, I, I um, as I said, didn't go to watch much football, but I did go to European nights at Ibrox. Maybe I went at most 10, 10 and, times. And, and how did your dad feel about that? Because he was a Hibs man. Yeah, he was born and brought up in Leith, as my mum was. Um, but he, he never, that wasn't something we ever spoke about. The book, which is out now, and in the book you talk a lot about Rangers. Huge part mm -hmm. of your life. And you joined Rangers as a player manager in 1986, aged just 32. 30, when, 33, I think. 32, 33. When, when you get that call and you have that meeting and you take the job on and you walk through the door being mm. unveiled as a Rangers manager, did you think, oh, shit, at any time? No. No? No, because... Because of this, the magnitude of the job. Well, I was... I was young, I was fearless. Um, you know, at that time, you know, my footballing career had just been one story of success after success, other than sort of being released by Tottenham or sold at Tottenham for 30 grand when I was 19. It had just been a case of onwards and upwards. Um, and then when I got that job, I said I was fearless. I'm, you know, I've been a big player, I've played everywhere, I've played in Italy, I've played for my country, I'm Scottish, I'll know what the job's about. I knew nothing about the job. I knew nothing about Glasgow Rangers. I knew it was a big football club. I didn't realise the size of it, and I didn't, I didn't know the enormity of the job. Would it be fair to say that nothing phased you? Absolutely nothing. Nothing, and, and I'm a bit like that now. Well, not a bit. I'm, I'm, so I'm, you are? I am like that yeah. now, yeah. Even when I heard I was coming on your show, most people would be shitting a brick. <laughs> I, I somehow summoned the courage not to be like that tonight. Are you relaxed? Totally. You, are you enjoying yourself? I certainly am, but this, this is still making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did Rangers mean to you now? Right it's now? A, it's, it's, it will always have a very special place. You know, you have an allegiance, an attachment, an affection for all the places you work. That mm -hmm. was such a unique place for me. My first job in management, it went so well. Um, did you know what you were going to do when you walked through the door? Me. I, yeah, I was going to be successful. You knew you were going to be success. Yeah. You knew you were going to take Rangers yeah. to a different level. Yeah. What was your first big decision? Do you remember that? Yeah. The, the, the first big one was to release Derek Johnson, I think. Was it? I think so. You know, I, I, Why? Well, so I'm a player. We've been teammates. We've known each other for a long time. And I just felt, you know, it was the right time for him to leave the club. And I can remember waking up in the morning, because when I came back, I went to live with my dad and the flat. You know, the council flat I lived in when I was a boy. I mm -hmm. um, had this great big shiny Jaguar from Glasgow Rangers, and it's parked outside my old council house. <laughs> and, I, and I remember sort of driving through. Is this going to be difficult? I thought about it for maybe 10 seconds, and then decided, no, it's not going to be difficult, because this is, if you're going to be a manager, you have to make decisions. You're the face of it. You have to deal with it. Let's go back to your debut for Rangers. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> um, that tackle. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, it wasn't a tackle. It was, it was an assault, wasn't it? It was completely... You know, my boy, who's 18, my son James, 18, um, every now and again, he'll, he'll, he'll get something up on YouTube. And I said, is this really you? Because <laughs> for a period, he didn't... He, you know, growing up, he didn't think I used to play football. And then, of course, when you, when you get into um, to the age where you're on the YouTube and you're looking, he's obviously pulled up a lot of the stuff that I'd rather didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those things. I got caught up in the moment, foolishly gave out all the writers an absolute field day, the television a field day. But there was, a, there was an upside to it because at that moment, you know, there was a bit of a stramash and all the Rangers players were wanted to be involved. And um, well, the Hibs players got involved. Except, Apart from except one, Ruffy. Except Ruffy. He stood in the goal and just watched Ruffy, it all. He was on the goal post. So it's not for me that. <laughs> every, other player got, every other player got booked oh, apart for him. That's typical him, isn't it? <laughs> um, but that was the upside that we're. And I thought, you village idiot, but there has been an upside. And I can remember, you know, getting sent off. I, thought, I can remember it vividly. I pulled my shirt out and I'm shaking my head and I'm walking towards the tunnel and I look up into the first row of the director's box. And my dad is going to the top of his head, you know, looking down. <laughs> How could he do that to me? You know, my, dad, my dad as a kid lived, started, we lived in, well, my grandma lived in Albert Street, but my family are all from, my mum's family as well, from Leith. And he used to sneak into Easter Road and play as a kid on the pitch there. And he was a hip supporter. And I, um, 
you know, I'm thinking, what have, what have you done? <laughs> you know, it was one of those moments I wish I could go back and revisit, but hey ho, it's, it's part of me. So we're going to go to the break now, and we're going to go to the break with a wee clip, and we'll be asking what was going through his head when this happened. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't go in first time, but... <laughs> 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 